Hey, Silverbacks fans, welcome back to another episode of Catching Up with the Backs. This week, I got Noah Sardacne joining me. Episode number four. Uh, Noah, thanks for uh, taking the time with me. Yeah, of course. Noah, so just questions about maybe growing up in Alberta. How old were you uh, when you first started playing hockey? Yeah, just from a, from a young age, I think around three or four. Pretty, pretty big hockey family, so my dad had me skating skating around then and kind of just always around the house with the mini stick and kind of fell in love with the game at a, around four years old, I'd say. So, yeah. Would you say your your dad, Steve, was a big influence on in you playing the game, starting up? Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously him just like always being around hockey and him working for the Oilers and stuff like that um, definitely had a big influence on me for sure, yeah. You have an older sister, uh, Danielle, who's uh, lighting the league on fire down south, playing for Colgate. I mean, did did you uh, learn a lot from your older sister growing up? Uh, yeah, I learned a little bit from her. So mostly my mostly my uh, my dad, but obviously I picked up a few things from her. And obviously, yeah, she's a really good player, so I can learn learn a lot of stuff from her game as well too. So yeah. What was your favorite memory uh, playing hockey growing up? Um, it's tough to pinpoint one. Probably one would just be be playing in the brick tournament, and I also got the opportunity to play overseas in the World Flex tournament there too, which was a, obviously super super cool and played played against a lot of really good talent there that are that I saw lots of in the World Juniors before they got postponed, which is pretty cool. That was going to be my next question. I mean, do you have a chance to play for um, Alberta in the Brick uh, Invitational? What was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was cool. Um, obviously, it was it's pretty cool to, to represent your province when you can. Obviously, it was a long time ago, but it was super cool just, like, seeing the, the caliber of players. Like, you're still super young, but you, you see all so many of those guys, like, getting drafted and playing in the World Juniors. It's, it's pretty cool. Growing up in Alberta, did you get to uh, a lot of Flames and Oilers games growing up? Yeah, mostly Oilers games. Uh, wasn't really a big Flames guy, so we have season tickets to the Oilers, so get get to get to go game, games when I can for sure. Yeah. Growing up, I mean, who was your who's your favorite Oiler growing up? Um, I liked I liked Ryan Smith. Hmm. Also, I like Jordan Eberle as well too. But I'd say Ryan Smith, and I also liked Alice Hemsky as well too. Before coming to Salmon Arm, you attended uh, the Rink Academy. Just talk about that uh, couple of years for yourself and, and how did that help uh, develop your game? Yeah, I thought that was really good for me. I had unbelievable coaches there and I loved my time in Winnipeg. I met some awesome people there. And looking back at it, it was, it was a great decision for me just to get there and develop there, which really helped me. So, yeah, it was, a, it was awesome for me there. Did you know anything about the BCHL before you came to Salmon Arm? Yeah, I did, actually. Uh, we had our, our CSSHL playoffs in Penticton every year, so it's kind of around BCHL playoffs every year, and that was something that was super cool for me. And then I knew quite a bit of people playing in the league as well, and it was a, it was a league I definitely was interested in and ultimately came to. So yeah. What uh, made Salmon Arm so attractive you, to you when you uh, made your decision? Yeah, just uh, the young coaching staff and just like their their development model and coming in and their their team was kind of up and coming with, with new coaches and I wanted to be a, a part of that. And, yeah. What were your expectations uh, for for the league? I mean, did you have uh, any? Uh, did you have a tough time maybe adjusting to? I mean, uh, a level above where you came from from rank? Yeah, definitely. It was a bit of a an adjustment. Um, just more uh, faster, stronger guys that make plays quicker, and it was definitely definitely an adjustment. But just had to, to take some time and get used to it. And then, yeah. Uh, talk about last season. Your your obviously first season with uh, the Salmon Arm Silverbacks. How did that twenty game pod season? Uh, how did that season go for you in terms of development and getting used to the league? It was good uh, for a while there wasn't seem like we were going to get games in. So, so I was super grateful to be able to play that 20 game season. Um, 
the state of the world. It was just nice to be able to play some hockey, and I was grateful for that. And practicing all year, I felt like I got a lot better, so I wanted the opportunity to showcase what I could do. And even though it was a smaller season, it was nice. And I know all the boys in their 20s really needed that. It was nice to, to, be, to be able to play for sure. When you first arrived, was there a player that kind of took you under your wing? Uh, I wouldn't say there was a player that took me under their wing, but I think our our whole leadership group was really good. And um, obviously I, I could learn a lot from, from Tass. Uh, he, he's, he was obviously really good and could teach me a lot of things. But yeah, I mean, our, our leadership group was super good, like Shazi and Benny and all them. And, Kind of just like help us push push along when we weren't really knowing if we were gonna play. So and obviously those guys are forwards, so they helped me for sure. Last season you got a chance to play on a line with Sullivan Mack. What was that like for you? Yeah, he's a he's a great he's a great player. He's also a super good guy, but he's super skilled, super fast. So makes the game makes the game pretty easy for me when I get to play with a player like him and and Tass. So. Yeah, it was great playing with those guys. So you pick up where you left off last season, this season with Simon Tassi. I mean, how special of a connection do you have with him? You live with him every day. And and how how quickly did that chemistry come on the ice for you guys? Yeah, um, kind of when we got put together in the third game there last year, it kind of just clicked for both of us. Um, you know, uh, we, we had – some chemistry for sure up the start and kind of just never looked back. And I think uh, this year just getting stronger and stronger, which is, which is really good. And obviously it helps when he's the caliber of a player he is. He's so good. And I think our games like mix really well together. Just I, I can give him the puck with, with speed and he kind of does, does the rest. So it's good. You play a big role in the penalty kill. I mean, you you and Simon are both uh, pretty uh, a dangerous duo, shorthanded. What uh, what do you guys do so well, shorthanded, that has allowed you guys to have so much success this season? Yeah, I think kind of just kind of just staying patient, um, not really sacrificing our our PK responsibilities and for uh, for offense. But once we get our our opportunities, I think we do do a good job capitalizing on them. So it's it's a good way to, to sort of shift momentum. You know, a shorthanded goal could be huge for a team, and if we can be able to keep that up, it can be huge for us here down the stretch. When you take a look at last season and then into this season, um, what did what was the biggest things that you worked on in the summer to help you prepare prepare for this season? Yeah, I really just honed in on my my strength and lots of speed and quickness work. Um, that's a big thing for me. I just want to keep getting faster and stronger. And I think I, I think I did a pretty good job. Just did some specific training for both of those. And, and I just really want to continue to keep working on that and hammering away at that because you can never be too strong, never be too fast. Right. So. The team is first place uh, in the division after the first half of the season. Um, overall, how do you think the season's going so far for, for you personally and uh, for the team? And what do you got to do to keep this thing rolling? I think it's great. Yeah, obviously, it's awesome winning. Um, I love to win. I think that's sort of some sort of a little above everything. So, it's got to keep doing what we're doing. You know, we got a really good team. Uh, not get complacent. So, just fight complacency and uh, keep it going and going into our playoffs. Just play the way we know we can play. And uh, I'm super excited for that and really confident in our group. Do you have any uh, favorite pregame meals or any game day superstitions that you do? Uh, yeah, we've been tasked with muck chicken and rice for probably every game, so we had to change it up a bit, actually. So I don't get too too picky with that. I don't think I could do that for 50 meals. But, but uh, yeah, I kind of just like to eat eat a lot, get a good meal in, get to the rink. I don't like getting there too early, just doing my thing and, yeah, getting ready. What do you do in your free time away from the rink? Yeah, um, I just got into investing stocks, so I've been looking at those quite a bit lately. And then uh, I really like to watch uh, NFL and do fantasy football and stuff like that. So, you any good in fantasy football? Oh yeah, the best. You're the best. Oh, How'd yeah. you do this year? Uh, second in one league, first in another, and then there was another one too. 
Well, really is it safe to say that you're just a, a diehard sports guy? You like basketball too? Yeah, I love sports. That's pretty safe to say. Um, so it, I gotta ask a question: Is there any significance to the number nine that you wear? Ah, uh, kind of just a family number. I've been wearing it growing up. Um, honestly, my birthday is March 9th. Mm. It doesn't really have much to do with that, to be honest. I'm just kind of a family number. I've always worn it grow, growing up, and yeah. Nice, nice. Um, is there an NHL player that you like to model your game after? Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a couple of players I like to model after. Um, I just I love the way Leon Dreisaitl plays. Just like he's so strong on his stick, like his passing ability. Uh, he's good good on faceoffs, and then also like a like a Mark Stone type of type of player. He's he's good. He can play in all situations, and uh, yeah. So you talked about getting faster and, and getting more strength for yourself. Other than that, was there any more goals uh, that you had in mind for yourself coming into this season? Yeah, um, obviously just keep getting better. I, think I can get better at everything. Just get some more power on my shot, round out my game, try to, try to play more physical and stuff. But uh, goal-wise, I think it was a big thing for me. It was I really wanted our team to be successful. And I think, uh, yeah, that, that was huge for me, just being a successful team and being the best player I can possibly be to help the team win. You're committed to Colorado College. Uh, what was that process for like you? For what was that process like for you, Noah? Yeah, it all it all happened pretty fast. My my decision, but I, I feel like I made a really good decision, and can't wait to to get get a, get down down south and play for Colorado for those guys. And they we got a brand new rink, and they play in probably the top conference in college hockey, which I'm super excited for. Why was uh, Colorado such a good fit for you? Just uh, the coaching staff. They got a whole new coaching staff for Coach Chris, Coach Mark, Coach Pete. Uh, there's NHL experience, uh, World Junior coaching experience, and they're young guys who, who, who like me, want to win, uh, want to build the program, and I want to I want to be a, a big part of that. So that was big for me. Noah, thanks so much for joining me. All the best uh, the rest of the way, and uh, good luck. Yeah, thanks, Blake. Appreciate it.